Normalization can be applied to entities, which will translate into tables and attributes which will become fields during the entity relationship model process to improve the design of a database. Normalization is a multi-step process to ensure that all database tables are logically linked together and that all fields in a table relate to a primary key. Normalization helps create a database design that is highly flexible, meaning it is adaptable to change. When additional entities, attributes, and relationships are needed, the model easily accepts the new items. Normalization reduces data redundancy, resulting in better data and less storage needs. This translates into systems that are more accurate and more responsive to user requests. Consider the scenario where you are a programmer for a university. If the Career Center asks for a list of students who are graduating with a specific major, the report can be generated quicker with a well-designed database. Also, the criteria for the report can be easily changed because the database is flexible. The accuracy of the report is improved because data redundancy has been reduced through normalization. Parts of the normalization process are referred to as forms. The first three normal forms, first, second, and third normal form are the most common. The forms are occur in order. The first normal form, referred to as 1NF, is the lowest form. The second form, 2NF, is a higher form, meaning the database is better designed. The forms encompass one another, so 2NF includes the requirements of first normal form and adds additional requirements. The third normal form, 3NF, designates a better designed database than first or second, and it includes the requirements of the second normal form, which includes the first normal form, and adds additional requirements. The first three forms are the most common, but there are higher normal forms that we will discuss later. Normalization is used during the design phase, during modeling. Normalization improves the data structure and results in an improved database. The objective is to ensure that each table conforms to the concept of well-formed relations. Each table should represent a single subject. For example, the department table should only store department information. A grade table should only store grade information. No data table should be unnecessarily stored in more than one table, meaning no duplication of data. All fields in a table should be dependent upon the primary key. And the goal should be to ensure that tables are in three third normal form. The process begins by identifying the dependencies of a table and then progressively breaking the table into new tables. In successful first normal form, there are no fields with repeating or similar data. Each field exists only one time and cannot be broken down any further. For example, let's consider a student table with two fields for major. This is a violation of first normal form because the major field is repeated. The concern is the design is not flexible. It's not expandable. A student could want more than two majors. The design change to reach first normal form is to create a student majors table. This allows a student to have a limitless number of majors. We have a student ID and then a major that relates back to a student's table. Let's look at the relationships view of these tables. Student ID is the key of the student's table, and student ID and major is the combination key of the major's table with a one-to-many relationship. A student may have several majors. There's another improvement to be made to this data to reach first normal form. Can you find it? Classes. I used a class number here. A class ID would be a better key. We have three classes here, but a student may have more than three classes. 
So the improvement would be to add a classes table with a student ID and a limitless number of classes now. Here's the relationships view. We have a students table now with majors and classes. It is now in first normal form. In successful first normal form, there are no fields with repeating or similar data. Each field exists only one time and cannot be broken down further. For example, our student table with majors or our student table with classes. Let's look at second normal form. Second normal form includes first normal form and non-key fields are fully functional dependent on the primary key. This will only affect tables with composite keys. And a composite key is a key with multiple fields. If a field in a table does not depend on all parts of a composite key, the table can be broken down further. For example, what if the classes table contained class number and last name? The primary key is, la is class number and student ID. Last name is only dependent upon student ID. There's no relationship between last name and class number. So this is a violation of second normal form. The design change to reach second normal form is a new student's table that contains the student ID and the last name, which is shown in this scenario. And so we created a student's table with the student ID and the student information as well as the classes and the majors. Let's look at example of third normal form. Third normal form includes second, which in turn includes first. It eliminates transitive functional dependency. Transitive functional dependency, it's when table A is dependent upon table B and B is dependent upon table C. Therefore, C is transitively dependent upon table A. What this means is that not all fields are directly dependent upon the key field. The table can be broken down further. For example, in a table called student, we have fields named student ID, last name, and first name. And we know last name and first name are directly related to student ID. And then we have credits and status. Credits and status are related to each other. The number of credit hours determines one's status as a part-time or full-time student. These fields could be moved into a new table because they're not directly dependent upon last name and first name. So the design change to read their normal form is to break the student's table down further and to create a new status table and remove those two fields into a table that has a better relationship together. So students would only contain student ID, last name, and first name, and the status table would contain credits and status. Here's the relationship view now of the tables in third normal form. Note the relationships. There's a one-to-many between students and majors. There's a one-to-many between students and classes. But there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the students table and the status table because one student will still have a total number of credits and a status. Normalization is the goal, but there's a point to stop the normalization process. Database design also considers processing requirements and speed. Normalization can go too far, and the number of tables can grow too large. As the number of tables grow, the processing speed can be negatively impacted. The normalization process may reach a point where the process is reversed. This process, denormalization, may reintroduce tables to the model. In this example, we could have broken status into two tables, status and credits. This is probably taking normalization a step too far.
And so to summarize, the first three normal forms, first normal form, second, third, and third normal form, these are the most common. There are higher level forms. Know that they do exist. There's the Boyce-Codd normal form. It's used for multiple overlapping composite keys. There is a fourth normal form. This should not have to be used as long as the other forms were implemented properly. It's achieved when no row in a table has multivalued facts about an entity. And the goal of normalization is to create efficient database tables.